this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to set up the Celestron Astromaster 114EQ telescope. I'm going to be breaking down every step and also sharing with you some tips and suggestions along the way. Now, if you do have any questions, comments, or feedback at any point, drop them down below and I'll get back to you and help you as best I can. And also, if you're new to the channel, then be sure to subscribe because I will be releasing further videos on this particular telescope. So with that said, let's delve into it. The first things that I recommend that you do is just take a quick stock check. So you want to make sure that you've got everything uh, that you're supposed to have. You don't want to start assembling and then notice you just don't have one of the key components. Now, if you're buying this telescope new, chances are it'll all be there. However, if you're buying secondhand, then that's when you need to be a little bit careful. One other quick tip I like to do is just kind of make a mental note or take a picture of what accessory or what part of the telescope came out of what box. Because in that way, if you ever do decide to pack it away, or if you wanted to sell it on, then you'll be able to pack it all up. Now there's quite a few components and getting it back in the box can be tricky. So that's a little quick tip for you. I'd suggest that you do that. What you want to do is to take out the tripod from the box and make sure you've got a nice open area. Once you have that, then essentially all we're gonna to need to do at this point is extend the three legs. So these may be uh, screwed by default. So maybe basically turn these uh, to open them up and out. Yep, that's all fixed. We're essentially just extending the tripod to its full capacity. Hopefully you can see that at this point, we're just pulling this out here and making sure that that is firmly in place. And then let me just check each leg. Yep, that's out. And now we just need to tighten each one of these. So I'll do that quickly for you. So there's one there. Make sure they're all fully extended because we need our tripod to be nice and balanced. So that's the second. Now to do the third. And I'm just gonna tighten that now. So by the end of it, let me just show you, we should have an equal tripod. At this point, we're gonna be adding the accessory tray. So it's really important that this is completely uh, flat and level, otherwise this won't work. All you need to do at this particular moment in time is you need to line it up with the shape, so it should look like that. And then we are twisting this clockwise so that l these parts here align underneath here. So it should look like this. As it twists, you'll see, and it will lock into place once you get there. I've just overshot that, but here we go. That is it locked in. And the accessory tray is now nice and in there, nice and secure. We can start storing our accessories in there. Now it's time to add the equatorial mount. It will come in packaging like this. So obviously locate it first. And then all you need to do is, you'll notice it's got this kind of circular area. You're putting that in here and it will slot on. And then there's a knob underneath, hopefully you can see, that we just screw. And that's basically attaching the equatorial mount to the tripod. That's nice and tight now. Hopefully you can see that it's all locked on point, you're going to want to thread the latitude adjustment screw into the equatorial mount, so it's this one here, until the screw is touching the inside of the mount. Now for those observant watchers, you'll probably notice that that was already in there for me. I must have left that in uh, from before, okay? But you'll notice, by the way, and this is a quick tip, if you look, hopefully you can see this, this is starting to move upwards. So this is essentially how we leverage the altitude of the telescope. Uh, and how we use this EQ mount, but more on that later. Now need to add the counterweight bar. Now, if your EQ mount is in this position, then what you'll actually need to do is twist this around first. So all I'm doing is applying a little bit of pressure. You might need to unscrew here if it's a bit tight, but you're just basically turning this upside down uh, so that there's the threaded bit underneath, essentially. That's where the threaded bit is now. So basically, all I'm doing is I'm just threading that in here. That's what you need to do, your end. This is the counterweight bar that we're gonna add the weights to in a minute. Uh, let me just do that for you. Hopefully, if I go underneath actually, that'll be easier. It's threaded. I don't know if you can see that. This is really hard to record while showing you at the same time. There you go. Hopefully you can see that. That's what I'm essentially doing here. I'll stand back in a second so you can see it. I wanna give you a good view. So I'm waiting for that to 
tighten, that's now tight. So hopefully you can see it side angle. It's now time to add the counterweights. So there's two of them for this telescope. So what you need to do here is undo this, so this little orange thing here, that is actually, you'll notice comes off. And what I like to do at this point, when that comes off, one second. Right, when that comes off, I like to put that in the accessory tray. And then what we want to do is basically thread both of them through about halfway up. And you may need to undo this screw on each one before it allows you to do it. Put it about halfway up for now. We can always readjust these later and screw them back on, like screw here to, to ensure that the, the counterweight stays about halfway up. So we're doing that with both. So I'm gonna do, again, I need to unscrew this a little bit. And like that, and then we're gonna screw this together. And at this point, make sure they're nice and tight on there. At this point, you can then re-screw this one on. So I'm just gonna quickly do that now, and then that is good to go. We now need to add our slow motion controls. There's two of them. Both of them are pretty much the same. The first one goes, so what you need to do is unscrew here. If you look in, you'll notice it stops it from, it basically allows you to attach it. So be careful if you unscrew it all the way like I just have. One goes here, and what I'm looking for, there's a little, you'll notice a little divot. So you wanna make sure that the screw, when you screw it on, it goes into that divot. Let me just get rid of the other slow motion control. It's better to use two hands. And I'm just screwing this on. So why well, say that? It's gonna be easier for me to move around. So hold that in position. And then we'll get there in a second. So that goes on like that and it will get nice and tight. And now this is on here like that. And you'll notice this is moving. So that's there. And the second one is here. So hopefully you can see that. It looks the same. So this is how a little tip, there's a little divot into this little kind of gray, uh, silvery bar, but they look, it looks exactly the same, just lower down. So let's put this in like that. And again, we're gonna screw this in place. That was much easier that time. Probably because I haven't lined it up properly. Right, and there we have it. Just some terminology which will help you operate this telescope going forward. This is the declination axis gear shaft, okay? That's what we've just installed at the top here. And the bottom one here is the RA axis gear shaft. So right ascension. So just bear that in mind, because if you ever need to learn how to use this telescope, those terms will typically come up. Now it's time for the optical tube. So unbox it, and then what I recommend you do is keep all this packaging, by the way, put this back in the box it came out of. Uh, that's This is really good to keep it well protected. But what you need to do at this stage is you need to undo both of these. And again, be really careful where you put them, because you're gonna need these. And you'll notice that just pinged off. So that will now allow us to get this completely out of its packaging and I'll talk you through the next bit in a second. What you may need to do, which I've just done off camera, is readjust it so that I've had, basically what you do is you make, sure, when these are off, that opens these up as you, you probably would have seen from the previous step. But you need to readjust it so that the dovetail, which is this orange bar here, is, let me just show you actually, let me put this back up. Let me put these on to clip this on. I need to screw those up as well. But this is the eyepiece, okay? Now the, teles the, the telescope, the optical tube, is going to sit on the uh, mount via this dovetail component here. So if you can imagine it, we need the eyepiece to be, you know, the dovetail to be flat and the eyepiece to be at the side. So you'll get the right ring placement if it's in this kind of position. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you. By going clockwise, I believe, so that these rings are now tight. So if I move this, it's, it's not gonna move the optical tube. That is now tight onto the optical tube itself. At this point, you may need to swivel the mount so that it's in the right position. So if I just show you, this is where it is at the moment. I'm swiveling this 
all I need to do, because this is unlocked, is I just need to swivel it so it's in that direction. So I believe that, that locks it in place. Yes, it does. That one locks it in place, okay, once you've found the right position. But what you want to do is angle it so that this, you'll notice, you'll see this area here now, that and, and this axis, slow motion control axis, is in line with the counterweight. And that's because we're now going to be putting the optical tube via the dovetail on here. So I just want to show you that now. Before you grab your optical tube, unscrew these so they are pretty much out. Otherwise, it's going to get a little bit tricky to do it all at once. So you need to do both of these. That needs to go a bit, go a bit further. I mean, focus. There we go. So bring that all the way through so it's like that on each screw. Nearly there. And then I'll get the optical tube and we can put it on. We're getting there, by the way, folks. Nearly there. time to add our optical tube so the best way to do this is we've got the dovetail at the bottom here now remember we need it to be facing the right way around you don't want to get this wrong so if I just show you what that looks like we're going on here like this and we're sliding in okay so I don't worry I'll walk around in a second um, but we're putting that on and then we are yeah just sorry I just want to make sure that's correct Make sure it's in the centre and then we are basically going to tighten these screws. And that should keep it in place. So there's the screws that we're tightening and that will keep it firmly in place. So we're now ready to add an eyepiece. So the first thing is just to take this cap off. You may need to release these screws in order to do so. I'm actually going to do that now because we're going to put the eyepiece in. Now I recommend starting with a 20 millimeter for a couple of different reasons. Firstly, the one that you get is image erecting, so the object you observe will be around the well, the right way up if you like. And not only that, um, so these are the, the eyepieces. I brought them over and put them in the accessory tray. This is the 20 millimeter. That's the 10 millimeter. Not only that, starting with the 20 millimeter is much easier. Gives you a wider field of view, so you see more of the sky at once. So it's just easier to identify and find objects. So always start with the 20 mil and then move on to the 10 when you have located an object. Sorry, I'm getting this out of the bag with one hand. Trickier than I thought it'd be. Maybe there. So that's now out. And I've got a cap here. You'll see now, I've taken the cap off that, that cap off the top there. And now all you need to do is put it in the correct way, which I didn't do first time around, stupidly enough. And then we're going to secure that in place with these screws here. Now, I've left that tag on. You might want to remove that yellow tag at this point because that can get annoying. But now our eyepiece is in, eyepiece is in place. Now you just need to add the red dot finder scope. So to do that, it goes onto this area here. Hopefully you can see. And then all you're essentially doing is just sliding it in like that. Let me get it lined up first. Let me do it and then I'll show you. Uh, it's quite tricky to do on hand. There we go. So I'm, no, I'm not in place. So now I'm in place. Hopefully you can see that. And now when it comes to operating it, this little toggle here, can you hear that click? That will be the on or off. You'll notice I've still got this tag in. You need to remove that, that's basically for the battery. Um, but yeah, when, it, when you're ready, that's how you will use it. Now lastly, don't forget to take the lens cap off. Otherwise you're not gonna see very much. So twist that, and then this should come off. Like that, and now, we are ready to look through the eyepiece and start using. So I hope this video is useful. That's how to set up the Celestron AstroMaster 114EQ telescope. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop it down below. I'll get back to you. Let me just stand back. I want to show you the whole thing. There we go. Look at that. Gorgeous. Cannot wait to use it. Do consider subscribing to the channel uh, and liking this video if it was helpful. And that said, hope you have an excellent day.